I'm so excited to have Dr. Michaela Premont here with me. She's a lifestyle blogger and pharmacist living in North Carolina. I wanted to catch up with Michaela because her journey through school, higher education, and side hustles really caught my eye, and I'm confident that Access Scholars will find her story and advice both interesting and helpful. So without further ado, hi, Michaela. Hi, so I finally, I'm happy to finally meet you. Yeah, likewise. We've been chatting back and forth for a while for everyone who's watching and listening. So very glad to be able to finally meet and chat and catch up about all things you and what's going on in your life. So why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself, um, how you got to where you are and what you're up to these days. Yeah, so um, I wasn't like the person, I didn't know I wanted to be in pharmacy until pretty much my senior year of high school, and I became a pharmacy tech. Um, I actually liked studying for pharmacy, but then I hated my first job, and so at that point, one year, and I was like, I, I don't know, I don't know if this is for me. I switched jobs, and thankfully, I ended up liking my new job way more than my first job, Good. <laughs> and I continue with pharmacy, of course. Um but yeah, I started my blog too. Uh, I think it was my P1 year or maybe one year after or so um, because I realized there wasn't really a space that pharmacy students were talking about, about their experience, and especially the ones that were finding. They were really old. They were outdated. Mm-hmm. Um, they weren't really well done. You know, normally if you're that science brain, you're not super technical or very creative, I find. There's not a lot of people that can switch flip. flip between those two sides and for me mm-hmm. I can I like doing both so I was like okay I have to do this I want to make sure that um, I can help other people through this journey because I don't like winging anything um, you'll find a lot of pharmacists don't like winging anything mm-hmm. um, and so yeah I create this platform now I get to help pharmacy students and pharmacists through their journeys um, and kind of keep up with my journey too because obviously I'm learning as I go so I get to document my journey. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where it, how I've got to where I'm at. <laughs> so, I, so I know that you're a pharmacy tech and you also run this blog. Um, so why don't you just tell us a little bit about like what a day in your life looks like? Like how do you balance between your job and your side hustle, your, your, your blogging job? Um, do you have any daily habits that you feel have contributed to your success? So... I will say the biggest habit that I do is I always work on my blog before I go into work because in in my mindset, I want to make sure I'm get putting putting myself first and giving my blog and my side hustle 100% because mm-hmm. we do it after work. You're so tired. You're exhausted from the day. Maybe you had terrible patients. Maybe you got cussed out at work. I mean, sometimes my days are just hectic. And so after work, I'm tired. I'm not very productive. So I literally wake up between 6 and 7 a.m. Um, now that depends because sometimes I work 12-hour shifts. So I literally 12-hour shifts. I don't really work on my blog, to be honest, just because I'm too mm-hmm. tired. But because I work 12-hour shifts, that means I also have more days off. And so um, I wake up early and then I have a to-do list. And what I've learned is don't put a million things on your to-do list because it won't get done. It just won't get done or you'll do the thing, the low hanging fruit, but you won't really get to what you need to get done. So I picked three things that I want to do that day. They're actually going to like either two things. It's either going to help me in my life working out or eating healthy or whatever it may be. And then I picked two that are like for my business. So whether that's writing a blog post, like I need to get stuff done that's actually going to make me money or Mm -hmm. help my community in some way. And if it doesn't do that, like, it's like, oh, I just want to edit my logo. Like, is that helping anybody? No. That can be done a lot later. Like, no one cares about your logo or, you know, whatever it may be, the low-hanging fruit. Right. Um, so three tasks. And then if I get them done, kudos to me. I can add some more. If I don't, then it continues on the next day. And that's really helped me kind of focus on what's important and not try to do, like, a million and different things. Also, paying people. Uh, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. That's what I've learned Very also. Cool. Um, I did not design any of my logos um, or my branding on my website. I did not do it. I'm not a brand marketing person. That wasn't. I did do it when I first got started, which I took it down, obviously, because it was terrible. But <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't. Um, it, was, it was pretty bad. But um, I pay, you know, pay for people that have that expertise because in the long run, it saves you time. 
It makes mm-hmm. me more money when you can just say, hey, I'm not good at graphic design, but you are. You can do it a whole lot faster than me taking two, three weeks trying to learn what you can do in an hour. That's a really great mindset and kind of outlook, especially with like only taking on three tasks at a time and then kind of going from there. I definitely want to touch on some of your school experiences, like both from college and pharmacy school. Um, I would love it if you could just tell me a little bit about what that journey was like for you. And maybe even if you had like a a specific experience or life lesson that kind of stands out to you from either school experience. Hmm. Well, I would say my first two years, so I did a six year pharmacy program. It was two years of undergrad and I came in the four years of pharmacy school. Um, It's usually, there's a couple five year programs. Most of them I would say are six or eight, depending on if you get your bachelor's degree beforehand. Mm -hmm. Um, so my first two years I was chill like I was school was so easy I remember the days it was so easy I mean I probably had a 4.0 GPA like I really wasn't studying that hard on some classes I would skip classes all the time not a good idea but I would (laughs) and then pharmacy school it was a whole different ballpark they I mean people tell you you know but you're like oh that's just you that will be no it is it (laughs) is It is. They weren't lying. They weren't even over exaggerating. It's just, I think it's because it's a different ballpark in terms of like, I have a lot more courses. So I was mm-hmm. taking probably six or seven classes wow. um, in one semester. So wow. it was a full load. And most of the classes I would say were not ones that you could just like not study for. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had a few like lab or something that you could kind of put off, but most of them were pretty intense. Um, and then you're learning stuff that you've never even seen. Like, you know, biology 101, you've seen most of it probably in high mm-hmm. school a little bit. It's not brand new. This is brand new. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot more intensity, the competitiveness um, between students, of course, um, get, can get to you. And also just seeing what everyone else is doing. Like, I remember seeing classmates being like five organizations. They could still go out. Yeah. They um, were working. You're like... I could barely have time to sleep. (laughs) Yeah. And I actually worked two jobs the entire time I was in pharmacy school, which now I think about it, it's a little insane. But somehow I made it through. But yeah, now I think about it, I'm like, why were you but did? Because I had to I didn't want to have a lot of student loans. Mm -hmm. So I worked at my apartment complex, which saved me on rent. And then I also worked as an intern. Um so yeah, I worked two jobs. I was working anywhere from 20 to, I would say, 30 hours a week between the both of them. Mm. And what I would say, the biggest lesson that I learned is to learn to, well, two, two lessons, actually. Learn to say no, because I was definitely a yes man. I always wanted to be involved. I wanted to work. Like, I wanted to make people happy. And at the end of the day, it's like, why am I making other people happy? Like, it doesn't matter if I do five organizations or if I'm in every club, like no one cares, truly no mm-hmm. one cares. Pick yeah. one. Um, so I had to be, I had to be honest with myself, which was hard to just look at yourself in the mirror and be like, what you're doing is not what you need to be doing. You need to step back. So I did. PT year, I pretty much dropped. I would say just about everything. And I picked one organization that I was heavily involved in. And I kept my two jobs because that wasn't really that wasn't really negotiable. Yeah. Um, but everything else was. <laughs> and then yeah. um, I also learned to I was what I was doing is I was working really really hard and trying to make myself earn rest. Like okay, you get the chapter whatever, you can take thirty minutes to rest. But like what? But why? The chapter's still gonna get done regardless. Like yeah. Um, so what I've learned is just to listen to my body and just kind of you know. If you're tired, if you're studying and nothing's going in, stop, stop, right. wait, go to bed, do whatever, Let's try it again tomorrow morning. It's a whole new mm-hmm. day and your body can be rested back. So those are like the two biggest ones I've learned. The question was, what was one thing that surprised you the most when you first started your blog? Um, or just anything that's, that's kind of surprised you like along the way, like maybe something that you didn't expect or... I guess just how it's grown, like, I knew that there was an opportunity there, like, there wasn't really much people doing it, Mm -hmm. Um, so I knew that there was an opening, right, I knew there was an opportunity there, I just had to tap into it, and so when I did, I think I just am mind blown about when people read my blog, and they stay up to date, and they email me, like, hey, um, using your advice, I got into pharmacy school, or, you know, 
that's just like my yeah. mind was like what you read my stuff and you come back consistently yeah. um <laughs> you have fans people, right and this is <laughs> the way people find me too sometimes it's not like you know the obvious is sometimes it's not even my website at all sometimes it's from word of mouth sometimes it's from interviews that I do um it's just like sometimes they find me randomly which is pretty cool that people <laughs> um but yeah I would say the biggest part is like growing that community and realizing like oh wait I actually have a community like like yeah. I wasn't doing that to do like I just wanted to share the information that I was doing and then like when you look back you're like oh crap all these people actually care what I have to say or they actually use the information I put out there which is pretty cool yeah. which leads me to my last question um, just about leveraging social media in general so um, if you could give a piece of advice to students who are maybe thinking about using social media or creating a blog as either a full-time business or a side hustle um, what would it be Hmm. <laughs> I have two. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, consistency is always the biggest factor. Um, I know that's the hardest thing too. It's just being consistent. So if you post mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, you need to continue posting Monday through Friday because people come back to your website or to your Instagram and they expect to see new content. And if you post once two months ago and then you come back and post again, like you want, you're not going to grow and you're not going to build that authority within your community. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes your emails, that includes your blog posts. And of course, everyone has to take a break. I'm currently in a break right now because you can get burnt out very fast. But mm -hmm. I always plan ahead for those. So I would have like eight, 10 blog posts written. So I'm always right. like two months ahead. So that way, if I don't feel like writing, I don't have to write. But the content's already done because I've already planned ahead for the time that I would get burnt out. Yeah. Um, and the other one is don't be afraid. I feel like I... So I actually started a blog in high school, which I don't think you can find. I'm pretty sure I deleted off the face <laughs> of the earth. Um, but I feel like I didn't start, I should have started my blog earlier than when I did, but I got stuck in um, the fear of it all. I also mm -hmm. got stuck in research phase. That happens a lot when you're just Googling everything, but then you never start. Don't right. do that. Just <laughs> do it. Just do it. Who cares what Johnny down the street thinks about it? Because at the end of the day, if you're doing what you're passionate about and you can make money off of it, why would you, why would you not? Yeah. Why would you not? Like the, all those people were laughing at me, but I get to work with cool brands like Sam's Club and H&M and they reach out to me. I don't have to pitch them. They come to me asking the partner. So um, it's scary at the beginning, but it's such a cool journey once you get into it. So I always just recommend just do it. Buy the domain. Yeah and go for it. Um, thank you so much, Michaela. This was super great. And I loved hearing all about your side hustle, your pharmacy journey and your school experience and everything along that realm. Um, and I'm sure that Access Scholars will certainly benefit from all the information that you've shared. So thank you so much for coming on. It's been so great to chat with you. Thank you. I'm so happy to finally chat and I'm glad that my story is useful and it can inspire other people to follow me.